Hello everyone, welcome back. Thank you so much for joining me. What we're gonna do today is a part two of a video I've done before. And I think in my mind it's called These Brands Fucked Up, but I think because of the YouTube, the YouTube, like, um, you know, censorship, whatever, I called it messed up. But basically I wanna look at some brands that kind of slipped up a little bit and maybe messed up a tiny bit on YouTube, on, on social media and nothing crazy, well, mm, Actually, yeah, so it's stuff crazy. And I just want to know your opinions as well and what you think about these, um, what I'm gonna bring up today. Do let me know just before we get into that today. If you had never been here before, if this is your first time here on my channel, hi, my name is Robert. I'm a professional makeup artist here on YouTube and also in real life. And it's my goal to help you become a pro yourself or just someone who's really good at makeup. So if that sounds like something you are interested in, then please do consider subscribing. Okay, let's get into it. Let's take a look at our first slip up. I want to know something though. I want to know if you think this person's lashes are real or you think something fishy is going on. So this is a post from, I believe it's a representative of Rodan and Fields. I think I'm saying that right. And it's a multi-level marketing company, a company in L MLM. And by the way, MLM represents, I see you in my inbox. No, no, no. No, 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 no. And here's the thing, and I'm not going to say everybody who works for a multi-level marketing company does this or is like this. I know there are some pretty intense sale methods out there and pretty intense like come and join my team methods out there. And this is probably one of the most questionable I've seen. And it's this girl's lashes. So she claims that within a certain amount of time, this lash serum has done this to her eyelashes. Now, take a look. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you feel this is like fake, false advertising, false promises. Is something fishy going on? I have to be honest with you. I've zoomed into those lashes and I've zoomed into the base and I can't quite figure out, has she gone and got crazy lash extensions to sell this product? Because I know people will be like, why would they do that? But have you seen the lengths that some multi-level marketing like representatives go to? Or is this just, you know, her natural lashes and, you know, she's she's... She's naturally born with these lashes and she's claiming the serum does it. I don't know. I would love to know your opinion. But for me, I'm going to verge on the edge of caution and just, and just, not that I would ever buy a product anyway, but, and just say that, you know, these do look a little bit questionable. Mm. Moving on swiftly. Beauty Blender. Okay. <laughs> so there was a video off their foundation and somebody was trying it on their hand and their arm. Listen, I have Beauty Blender products. Um, they're Beauty Blenders. I like them. Products are fine. But here's, here's what we shouldn't be doing online. Here's what we don't do. Don't sell a product that is a foundation and then claim it does something that a filter is doing. <laughs> I believe they claimed in this video that the quality of the, it was the quality of the camera that made it look like they had a filter on this one patch of skin. But I mean, I doubt it very much picked this exact same spot where the foundation was being applied to be like, oh, I'm going to make that bit less quality. I'm going to make that um, blurry, you know? I don't see why. If your foundation is good enough and you're happy with your foundation and you're happy that it works, put it out there without a filter explain why it works, explain why you're happy with your foundation, why it's a good product, if it's a good product, and, and let the people decide. People online are doing reviews, don't bl don't put a filter. It's so obvious. I know a lot of people don't realize there's filters on, on some videos sometimes, but it is so blatantly obvious when a bit of skin is completely blurred and you're rubbing it in and you know, the fingers are becoming blurred. Now here's the deal. I understand that in editorials, I need to drink. I understand that in editorials, there's a need, a want to edit the picture. That's fine. That's fine. Like someone's skin. But when I, I believe that if you're going to put a foundation on someone's skin and then edit it, if you're trying to sell the foundation, if you don't mention what foundation it is, fine, whatever. But if you're going to be like, look how amazing my skin is. Look how much this foundation blurred my skin. And then you're blurring it and fixing it. That's not realistic. That's not real advertising. That's false advertising, right? Because it's claiming it's going to do this to the skin is claiming it's gonna do what Photoshop has done to the skin. So it, it, I just, I don't know. I just feel like brands need to stop thinking that people are dumb and stupid. People might look at that. And I was reading through the comments and people were like, wow. So there are people that can't see that filter, which is kind of dangerous. Like it's, it's every, everything online is edited or there's, you know, there's lights. We know this, right? There's lights here. I have three lights here and my camera lens It is a good quality lens. So it makes my skin look better than it is in, in real life. It makes everything look nicer than it is, but I personally wouldn't put a filter over my videos 
because what's the point? <laughs> and, and, and you know, if I'm trying to show you how a foundation works, but I'm filtering it, there's no point, right? That's kind of a little bit narcissistic to be like, oh, I'm trying to review a foundation, let everybody know how a foundation is, but I want my skin to look perfect. It's a little bit like, well, then you're not really reviewing it. So I I just I just don't know why bigger big brands like this choose to believe that a lot of people are fucking stupid. It was, it's insane. It's almost like, you know, those adverts. By the way, a lot of people tag me in these videos saying, does this work? And you know, it's like that, I don't know what it is, but it's like that green thing that people put on their nose and then loads of like black heads appear and they wipe it off and then it's completely blurred. And underneath it's an obvious filter in a circle. It doesn't work, that's not how it works. If you have that many black heads in your nose, then, and they're that dark and yeah, no. They're like poppy seeds or something. Talking about filters, actually we have two more with filters. Let's take it back to Kim Kardashian. Uh <laughs> Someone posted this, um, IGTV, or was it TikTok? I don't know what it is, you know, they're all kind of cross-platform at the moment, of her, I mean, let's talk about production value as well. She's kind of like selling her, what's it called? You know, the like nude underwear and the shapewear and all that kind of stuff. And she's running her finger across her body and then her finger just like, like completely like moves and bends and, and it's all disfit, it's all morphed because there's a, an obvious filter on it. I cannot believe what I'm seeing. I mean, I, I can, but I can't. Look, look at her finger. This video is photoshopped. Look at the finger. Kim photoshopped her body on her Skims campaign. I cannot. Why are we doing this? One, 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 first of all, whoever put that out there was like, yeah, this is great. You can't see that filter. Who's your team? Who's your team letting that happen? <laughs> You know, if, you, if you're gonna lie, lie all the fucking way. Don't make it too obvious. But at the same time as well, again, you're selling underwear, you're selling shapewear. And of course it's come to be expected from a Kardashian, Jenner, you know, group that these filters are used quite heavily and um, a lot, a lot of the time. But honestly, the, who, who let that, who on your team watched that and was like, yeah, that finger's fine. That finger that turns into a, I don't know, some kind of salad finger. You remember salad fingers? Uh, who who said that was okay? Hey, I just want you to jump in here really quickly before we get into the next half of the video. And I just wanted to let you know about the Double Cleanse podcast, which is a podcast by me and my brother James. And we talk about more things exactly like this over on that podcast. We talk about influencers, doing influencer stuff influencing, the truth about it, about being YouTubers. And we talk about everything beauty related as well, not just YouTube stuff. So if you wanna hear more like deep dives into the beauty world, then go ahead and check out the Double Cleanse podcast. It's available on most podcast streaming platforms. Um, Yeah, thanks, bye. Let's talk again about filters, right? Is it Rodile, Rodile? Is that their name? So they shared a video. Here's another thing as well. And my brother James has this list on Instagram of um, brands that pay influencers to do adverts for them, but allow them to use filters on the products they're trying to sell. So for example, if a brand is trying to sell like um, a, uh, a foundation and there it says ad on it, and there's an obvious filter, that's added to the list because a brand is allowing an individual to falsely advertise the effects of this product. Obviously, if they're advertising it to you and trying to sell it to you, you want to get, you know, the, the benefits that they say it has, you want to get that from a product. So Rodial put up this, I believe it was a video about a primer. I'm doing this video kind of blindly because I saved all the videos somewhere. <laughs> For a product that was meant to blur the skin, again, obvious filters. Why are we allowing this to happen? It may not have been a paid advert. I actually can't remember if it was, but they shared it. They shared it. Remember, was it Laura Mercier who did it before? I can't remember in my previous video, but they shared it and put it out there. Therefore saying, yes, we approve. This is what our product does. It doesn't add a filter to your skin. We're not there yet <laughs> with these products. It does not completely get rid of pores. Your pores cannot completely disappear. First of all, Texture cannot compete. If you saw someone in real life with no texture on their skin at all, you'll be like, what the fuck is wrong with your face? You have a very slippy, weird face. You are an alien. Everyone has pores. Having pores doesn't mean you have big open pores. Everyone has pores. You have to have a skin. That's how skin is. You're gonna see texture. You see texture on the skin. So to claim that it gets rid of pores and to claim it does it the way that we can see it visually happening in this filter is insane. It's a false claim. 
100% allegedly, in my opinion, but fact, but my opinion. You know what really pisses me off is how much money makeup is at the moment, right? And how quick we are, especially on certain apps like TikTok, to um, big up a product, to say like, this product is amazing, this is amazing, this is amazing. People's money is being spent on makeup. People spend their money trying to find that product that will, you know, change their makeup, change the way their face looks, change. And it's really disappointing to see people and brands put out things like this and be like, yeah, we're good. This is what our product does. No, fucking stop. Especially if you're less affordable, more on a luxury end, you, you stop conning people into using your products. Talking about um, fake, <laughs> talking about false advertising, let's talk about fake swatches. Now, I'm going to put some swatches here and the brand I'm using it from I absolutely adore, but fake swatches are very, I, <laughs> I put on Twitter, I was like, is it just me or are brands using fake swatch swatches, like Photoshop swatches? And everyone was like, yeah, of course, it's been going on for ages. I'm like, I'm like, where have I been? I didn't realize. And the more you look into these, right? Like a picture of an arm and it's, what's wrong with my arm? There's like a picture of an arm and then it's like a swatch, swatch, swatch. And then there's somebody who has fairer skin, like a medium tone skin and a deeper skin tone. All the swatches look exactly the same. You can zoom in and see, like, even, like, the crevices of glitter, for example, are exactly the same, or they've been changed very slightly, or they've been completely drawn over or painted over with um, some kind of tool in Photoshop. Here's, here's my question, right? Is there must be some kind of, and I think this has been proven before, there must be some kind of, like, royalty-free image where, or, like, you pay for a stock image of free people's arms. And then you take a picture of a product, a close-up picture of a product, and then you, you know, cut it out and stick it on the arm. You can cut off the ends. You can easily, sh you can easily shade the outside corners and lighten the middle to make it look like, you know, a real swatch, like lights hitting it in a shadow around the arms. And again, it's that false advertising. If you want, if you want a swatch like that, then just put up a picture of the, the palette and zoom in. Because you, you haven't actually tried it on other people's skin tone. You're just putting the picture on top of a person's skin tone. So how do we know? How do we fucking know? Like, what? how do we know what's, what? how it looks? We don't. Because you've taken, like, yes, you can build it up, you know, to, a, to that kind of pigmentation if you just keep going and going and going. But at the same time, that's not how much people use on their eyes or how, how they, or how, how much they use on their cheeks. For example, a blush, right? If someone's swatching a blush, but it's just, it's just the, it's just the product taken and stuck on someone's arm. No one builds up their blush that much where it's a solid colour. You kind of still want to see a bit of skin through it, right? Like, like blush like this. You don't build it up so it looks like exactly like the colour. You don't build it up to the pigmentation that you may have on your eyes for a lot of people. So to suggest that that's how it's going to look isn't isn't right. We need to see how it looks in in like a sheerer tone on top of skin tone. How it looks sheerly done on top of a deeper skin tone or a fairer skin tone, a medium skin tone. It just doesn't add up. Swatches I find are super unreliable. That's why I never do them on my channel because the way people go into eyeshadow palettes with their finger, they're pressing so hard, you see all the blood rushing into their fingernail and they swatch like this. You're never going to put that much pressure on the eye either. Swatches, I think, are useless from the brands. It's great to see people doing them on a YouTube channel where they do one swipe, one swipe. But there's also, like, recently a brand put out a video where they were like, we're going to swatch this. And to show that our eye primer is great. And what they did is they showed them dipping their finger into... They showed them putting primer here and concealer here or something like that. And they dipped their finger into the eyeshadow palette on top of a primer and it came out really well. Then what you didn't see is, you know, a clean finger going back into the product and then wiping again. They just went back in with a finger and swiped. So yeah, if you put all your product here and then less product here, of course you're going to get a difference. Of course I prefer to use eyeshadow primer over concealer. But I mean, you still get heavy pigmentation on top of concealer. It just doesn't sit as well. It doesn't blend as well. It doesn't last as long. So the purpose of that video was to prove a point, but it was a missed point and it seemed like a manipulated point. You know what I mean? So swatches, I just really don't trust, especially from the brand. Let's talk about the last thing. And this caused quite a stir on my inbox. And this was Dior um, creating these looks. Listen, I find Dior packaging very questionable, right? I think it's very old fashioned. I think it's very much, you know, um, hmm. It reminds me of some cheap makeup I used to buy when I first started doing makeup and I went to practice. And it's a little bit like, why haven't you advanced with your packaging just yet? It's, it's strange. And to have those kind of like sponge applicators, I think is very old fashioned. 
they're very good for packing on eyeshadow for using like glitters and using shimmers and things like that. But to use them as an actual applicator, not mixing them with brushes, just using them is very questionable. And you all were outraged <laughs> by some of these looks that Dior were putting up using this thing. Now listen, I, I, um, hmm. here's how I feel about this in the, in the world's current climate, right? Is on social media. There are so many people doing incredible makeup artistry online. 12 year olds to, you know, 90 year olds making incredible eye looks. Just, just, you know, people, not necessarily makeup artists, not necessarily people who are um, in the world of makeup or beauty, just people doing their own thing, who, create, who create these amazing, amazing looks, who are incredibly skilled and incredibly talented. And then you're putting this out from a big fashion house, a big, you know, who are known for some iconic beauty products, you know you're gonna get torn to, to shit. You know, and you may look at this and think, you know, it's more editorial, it's not so Instagram. I'm very aware of the difference between like online makeup, Instagram makeup, and um, editorial makeup. Do it in a magazine, do it for Vogue, do it for ID, do it for Runway, you know, but when you're gonna put an Instagram where everyone can see it and you're, you're, pitching basically to the Instagram audience who are gonna see if they're interested in makeup, if they're gonna see your page, if they're gonna see your post, you can bet their For You page has these incredible looks. You don't wanna be putting that there, you know, you wanna kind of keep your, <laughs> that to like the editorial realm. And you know what, even editorial, I would question this. If I was doing, you know, like if I was in like Fashion Week or a show or something and the key artist was like, this is the look we're gonna do. I'd be like, okay, let me, let me, I'd be like, oh. I won't question it because I'll be paid to do it. <laughs> but it's, it's it's very odd. I do find it very strange. I'm not one to question someone's, um, hmm, yes I am. Yeah, I just feel like it was an odd marketing decision. We'll leave it at that. Thank you so much for joining me. I would love to know your opinions on the things I've covered, what I've said. You may agree, you may disagree. There may be an explanation I'm unaware of. Let me know. Thanks again for joining me. Keep an eye out for all these brands doing stupid things and just let me know. Please consider subscribing if you want to. Give this video a big thumbs up. Follow me on TikTok, Instagram, and Twitter, and I will see you very, very soon. Bye.